couple activity, one of the really fun couple activities is to make some pizzas together and, and, and decorate, well not really decorate, but put on your own toppings exactly what you want. Spend some time in the kitchen together. Um, if your husband's like mine, he really didn't want to do the dough, but he did want to put his toppings on and then eat it. And so it was just kind of a fun hour that we could spend together and put the toppings on the pizza and then eat it. Remember, if you want to have a fun couple activity, one of the really fun couple activities is to make some pizzas together and, and, and decorate, well not really decorate, but put on your own toppings exactly what you want. Spend some time in the kitchen together. Um, if your husband's like mine, he really didn't want to do the dough, but he did want to put his toppings on and then eat it. And so it was just kind of a fun hour that we could spend together and put the toppings on the pizza and then eat it. Remember, if you want to have a fun couple activity, one of the really fun couple activities is to make some pizzas together and, and, and decorate, well not really decorate, but put on your own toppings exactly what you want. Spend some time in the kitchen together. Um, if your husband's like mine, he really didn't want to do the dough, but he did want to put his toppings on and then eat it. And so I'm going to make some margarita pizza. Margarita pizza is what we ate in Italy. I came home and um, Gianni North Beach, Gianni TV, I found a recipe that was very close to what we had in Italy. And so I made some pizza off of his video. And so now I'm going to do it um, in a similar way, but with a little bit, a few different ingredients and then just a little bit different. I'm going to take <clears throat> three and a half cups of flour. I'm going to take a cup of spelt flour and a cup of white, or half a cup, these are half cups, sorry. So that's one cup, one and a half, giving, half, giving an equal division between white, regular, white, um, unbleached flour and spelt flour. There's two and another half spelt will make two and a half. Three. So three and a half with the spelt. Okay. So I still have a half a cup of flour, which I am going to use to um, get the yeast going. So I'm going to need some very um, warm water, just about, just beyond uh, temperature for, you know, like you fix a baby bottle, kind of. At least that's what I do. I stick my wrist into the water and come up with temperature that's about that of what I would do a baby bottle at, maybe a little bit less. I mean, a little bit warmer than that. You don't want it too warm or the yeast, it'll ruin the yeast. And then two and a half teaspoons of yeast. So one, two, I'm missing my little half, so I have to put two quarters in. So there's two and a half. Two and a half teaspoons of yeast is just about exactly what, um, like if you just had one packet of yeast, you could use just the packet of yeast instead. And you want to blend this up really good and get this blended into the water. Let it dissolve it. I'm kind of a scatterbrain cook. I like to just do it as I go. Sometimes I don't do everything just um, in order. Like I still got to put the salt in the flour. I haven't done that yet. But right now I thought I'd get the yeast going because the yeast will take a little while. That's done. So that's a cup of warm water, two and a half teaspoons of yeast, and then a half of a cup of flour. And this 
We'll make this yeast double really quickly. We're going to put it in a nice warm place after we get it mixed up. Wire whisk will make it go together better and easier and faster. Okay, I've got it all put in together. I am going to put it into a plastic container just because I can cover it and keep it warm. So I'm going to put it in this just leftover plastic container and I'm going to put it somewhere warm for about 30 minutes. I'm going to put it over where it's just warm in the room, let it sit for 30 minutes and come back and it should double in size and be kind of fluffy and so and thick. So we're going to wait for that. And while we do that, we also need a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm not an exact baker, so there we go. There's about that. And then I'm just going to mix that into the flour so that we're ready to go when I come back with the yeast. So it'll take about 30 minutes for the yeast. Um, to double and then we'll come back and we'll put this together. Alright, time to take a look at the yeast. See the yeast is doubled and see how it's got all the bubbles in it? See all the bubbles in it? So our yeast is doubled, it's been about 30 minutes and it's ready to go. So we're going to take our flour and salt mixture that we did earlier. Remember I used half spelt flour which is supposed to be just really good for you and um, then the other half was the unbleached white flour and then um, I just kind of make a dent in it and then I'm going to just pour in the yeast and then there was um, we can add like a quarter cup of warm water to this. So, okay, you can put about a quarter cup of warm water in. Because we do need to get it a little moister than I had it. And you could use some dough hooks and you could put it in a bread mixer, but you know, I guess I'm just kind of having fun just doing all this by hand. So, just a little bit more, a little bit at a time. Get it start mixing in a little bit. I like to add it in just a little bit at a time because I don't want to get it too sticky. As soon as it starts to go together, see there it's starting to go together. <laughs> well, mix it with something a little stronger next time, huh? Okay, it's starting to go together. I think we're about ready to use our hands now. When it starts to go together, then you start mixing in the ingredients with your hand because you don't want to get it too moist. A little bit more. So it's going to take about the full quarter a cup of water, maybe a little bit more. Get some more of this mixed in. Take it out of the bowl and start kneading it as soon as you've got it to go together. So this has now come together so that it's just an itty bitty bit sticky to my fingers. Not bad, but it doesn't stick to the marble 
or to your countertop and then you just need to knead it. You're going to knead this for a while. Probably about five, four or five minutes maybe until it feels nice and smooth. And you'll notice I just kind of turn it and mush it again using the heels of my hand to push and I just kind of go in a rocking motion forward and pull it back, push it forward, turn it over. Just continually work that dough. It's important to knead it really well. Okay, when you think that you have it all smooth and all the ingredients are mixed and it's really nice and smooth and pretty, um, I'm just going to put it into kind of a, like a little ball, long ball, and I'm going to stick it in a bowl and cover it and let it sit until it doubles in size again. Then we'll be ready for the stretching and putting it onto the pizza, um, onto the uh, stone. So you can just stick it right back in the bowl that you had it in when you made it. And we want to cover that probably with some plastic wrap because it'll keep the heat in. You might want to uh, just give it a little dusting of flour so that the uh, as it expands and gets larger it doesn't stick then to the plastic wrap. I usually also cover it with a cloth Keep the heat in there. Stick it in a warm place for, um, I'm going to guess it's going to take about 30 minutes, but I'll let you know. But it needs to double in size. Okay, I am now heating my oven up. It's up to as hot as it goes. It's up to 550, so we're about ready. Um, the dough has now doubled in size. Nice rise in the dough. I've put it in a nice warm spot, covered with the plastic. And see, even then it did stick a little bit, but if I hadn't put the flour over the top of it, we'd have had a mess. And then you can decide how big of these to make. Usually this will make four pizzas. So you can decide how big of a pizza you want.